Good morning and welcome to First Jamara Presbyterian Church as we meet together to praise and to worship God. The announcements just are as follows. Sunday School will meet together again at half past ten and we're grateful that the Sunday School teachers have been providing that online facility and it will meet together online again and the worksheets can be downloaded from the church website. Bible class will meet at quarter past ten just as always. I'm just about to go on another walk. I've enjoyed doing these walks because it gives me an opportunity to get outside after looking at screens all day with online school. I've enjoyed discovering new parks and circles around my area and I've enjoyed keeping my fitness up as there is no sport at the moment. Thanks to Linda McCauley who is the CEF worker in County Mayo for putting together a video sharing a bit about what she does and giving her word of encouragement. Hello, my name is Linda McCauley and I have been working with CEF in County Mayo on the west coast of Ireland since June 2017. We really do thank God for his grace and goodness over these past years. We thank him for granting favour and for opportunities to partner with churches in several of the main towns in County Mayo and for weekly good news clubs that have been able to be established. It's always a real privilege to be able to meet with the boys and girls on this weekly ministry. And we really miss the face-to-face -face contact during these days, but we do pray that the Lord will be using the very simple videos that go out into their homes week by week. We pray that boys and girls and their parents will gather around, will tune in and listen to God's word, and we just long and pray that many would come to trust in Christ alone as their own and personal saviour and will go on living for him all the days of their lives. It was lovely too to be able to visit schools, some on a monthly basis and others at Christmas and Easter. But we pray that the Lord will continue to, to speak on and cause the boys and girls to remember the precious truths that they have heard. We, we thank God that his word will not return on to him void. We pray too that God will be using literature packs which the children receive in the post. We do ask that God will help the children to read the books, to listen to the CDs and to watch the DVDs. And of course our thoughts are turning to the summer time. We always enjoy being able to reach the children in the five day clubs, the holiday Bible clubs and in camp. And we pray that the Lord will lead and guide and will grant much wisdom about that this year. I do want to say a word to the young people in Faust Dramara. You're doing a really lovely thing for the Lord by walking many miles and raising money for the work of CEF. And I want to thank you and I want to encourage you. Most of all, I do pray that you will know blessing and encouragement from the Lord. May he keep you safe. And I'll leave you with a verse from Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. And there we read, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And you are doing a good thing for the Lord. He sees and he knows. He promises that you will reap a harvest. So I pray that you'll really know his help and his nearness. And may he bless you. Thank you. Thank you to the Bible class for all that they're doing at this time. And uh, thank you to... Um, you for what you're doing and also as you meet together every week. Midweek will meet at the usual time of 8 o'clock on Tuesday night via Zoom and the youth 
will meet on the 7th um, of March via Zoom. Uh, there'll be more about that next week. We have already met with Adam Urban in Poland and we're going to meet with Danny Roberts as he shares with us uh, during our next youth Zoom. A parenting workshop is also going to take place on the 19th of March and there'll be more about that in the weeks to come. But just to put it in your diaries, to highlight that for people that have got young people, or even folk who work in some of the youth organisations, if you want to be aware of what's going on on the internet and at this time, uh, there'll be more about that in the weeks to come. So I think those are all of the announcements I want to bring to your attention just for this morning. I'm very grateful that, the, that this is PW Day and that the ladies have agreed not only to lead the service, but to do it virtually. And so on behalf of all of you who are tuning in today, can I thank Andrea and the committee of PW to the Inspire Ladies Group. We're looking forward to what you're going to share with us today. And thank you for not only doing it, but doing it in the virtual way that you are. It involves a lot of work. And so thank you to you ladies and to David who has pieced it all together. Thank you once again. We now worship God together. Good morning. I'm Andrea Wilson, the leader of RPW at First Dramara. Welcome to this Inspire Ladies PW service. We're delighted to bring you this service to you via this media platform. We want to take a moment to extend a very warm welcome to everyone who's joining with us for the first time. If you're just having a look, we're delighted to have you with us. Let me offer a warm welcome to Mrs. Pauline Kennedy who is our Women's Ministry and PW Development Officer. We are so glad you're able to record for us. We're looking forward to hearing your message from God. Thank you to all the ladies taking part this morning. I appreciate your support. Thank you to Robert and Audrey Hawthorne and Ruth Copes for sorting all the praise today. And also thank you to Leah and David Spars for recording and joining all the parts together. Let us hear the word of God. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Dear Father, we come to give, together to give you honour and praise. We ask that you would help us to draw close to you. Please come and speak your words of wisdom into our lives. Help us to embrace one another, our similarities, our differences, our concerns and our joys. We long for your touch on our lives, that we may be your hands and feet to the world. Inspire our hearts, heal our wounds, bring your peace into our worries and your hope into our disappointments. Come Lord and weave your love into our fellowship together that we may overflow with grace and allow your truth to light up our lives in you. Let everything we do in this service glorify your name. We worship you because you are our God forever. Amen. Our theme this year is side by side and in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, Paul gives the believers this instruction. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. It is on this call to live side by side with one another that the PW theme is based. In 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul longed for each member of the body of Christ in Thessalonica, no matter what age or stage of life, would be active in building others up and showing real love as they walked the path of faith. This wasn't something they were to do for a while and then stop. It wasn't a one-off ministry event or theme for the year. This was to be a way of life 
and they, ordinary people like us, were to keep on doing it more and more. Through Side by Side, we have the opportunity to explore how we can, women who build up each other, find fresh ways to walk and grow in faith together, even in the midst of this pandemic. It is our prayer that we can equip and enable each other to walk side by side as disciples of Christ, building one another up as we serve, love and follow him. In Ed Welsh's book, Side by Side, it says, If you feel quite weak and ordinary, if you feel like a mess, but have the spirit, you have the right credentials. You are one of the ordinary people God uses to help others. Now, let us praise God. I'm in my kitchen this morning and you can see I've my apron on and I've my hair tied back and I've washed my hands and what have I in front of me today? A biscuit tin and a big round cake tin. Now, I'm sure you know what is in the, the biscuit tin. Yes, just plain biscuits. So we'll wonder what's in my cake tin. Shall we have a wee look? Oh, if I can get it open. We have some dairy milk my favourite and we have marshmallows as well so just close it now let's have a look we've got digestive biscuits marshmallows and chocolate so I wonder what I'm going to make this morning I wonder can you guess 
and I'm sure you have. Yes, we're going to make some s'mores. Now, I'd never heard of these until the first lockdown when we were outside around the fire and my daughter said, Mum, I'm going to get make some s'mores. Um, so we had them. They were beautiful. But when I was a young girl growing up and I was in the Girl Guides, we just, when we sat around the campfire at night, we just got a stick and put the marshmallow on the end of the stick. Um, and I loved the way when you put them into the fire and they started to melt, they were a lovely gooey mess. So we're going to start to make them today. I've got my instructions with me. So the first thing I need is the digestive biscuit. Got my plate. Got my plate. And the next thing is the chocolate. So as you know, I love chocolate. So I'm going to put four bits on top of the biscuit. Just like this. Then I'm going to put the marshmallows on top. I just put a bit of marshmallow on top of each chocolate square, like that. Now, if you press the marshmallow, you know that it's all squishy and soft, just like your heart. And Jesus wants to be into your heart and live inside your heart. And then the final bit to my instructions is to put a biscuit on top. Oh, my marshmallows keep rolling off. So here we go, we need to get them to balance and put the biscuit on top. Here it is. It's a bit like a sandwich. It is with your heart in the middle. And that's where Jesus has to be, right at the centre of your life. So we're going to put that in the microwave because of no fire today. So you put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. Oh, what comes out? You know the way a microwave changes everything and that's just the same when you ask Jesus into your heart that everything changes and we always have a friend that's always there that we can turn to when we need help. He wants us to put our trust in him and follow him. Now it won't be easy but he'll guide us in the right directions. Just like I this morning had my instructions to follow how to make the s'mores that's just the same as our Bible. So God's word is in the Bible and it gives us the instructions on how to live. So look, my s'more. Oh, it's so sweet, just like God's love. And so sticky. Look how the marshmallows have got all sticky. Now life can be sticky sometimes, but we can ask God to help. And we make many mistakes in life and sad and scary things can happen. But we always know we can turn to God he's our best friend. Now I think I'll wait to eat this but if you get the chance maybe you'd show me your photographs. I'm sure they'll be much better than my s'more. I did wonder if I should use this giant marshmallow or maybe some mini ones. So I hope you'll have a wee go and have a wee try and I'd love to see your s'mores. Now before we go we're going to pray first so remember to close your eyes as we talk to God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for our children. I pray that they will ask Jesus into their hearts if they haven't already. I pray that they will grow in grace and in a knowledge of Jesus and may develop into mighty men and women of God. Protect them from the enemy who seek to stumble them, but equip them, I pray, with discernment to turn from what that which is bad to seek after the good. Help them to say sorry and follow you. Day by day, I pray that they'll fix their eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of their faith. Guide them in the path of peace. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Now, boys and girls, we've got a little chorus for you and there are actions. So, up you get, stand up, give your hands a shake. Okay, now are you ready for the actions? I'm going to show you just some of the words and the actions to them. And then I'm delighted to say I've got some very young ladies who are going to show you. So the first word is I, which is easy. So you point yourself, I have decided. So it's decided and it comes down onto your hand. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. Okay, do you want to try it again? 
I have decided to follow Jesus. Okay, and we say that for three times and then no turning back. So it is no turning back. Okay, no tur oh, turning back. Sorry, I made a mistake there. So off you go and it is I have decided to follow Jesus and now my friends are going to take over. Bye bye. <laughs>
We pray for those we know who struggle with mental illness, anxiety and depression. We pray that there will be resources released to help, enough staff employed and finances given towards mental health services nationally. Help us to be a friend and a listening ear to those who suffer. Fill us with compassion and wisdom. Be with those who are wrestling with sorrow in these days, that they may know your victory over these dark thoughts which currently seem to triumph. For your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness, graciousness and sovereignty. Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. Our hearts rejoice in your salvation. We will sing the Lord's praise, for you have been good to us. Amen. The reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And now you will see the inspired ladies singing side by side in a virtual way. How deep the Father's love for us. Many times as human beings, we let each other down and also let God down in so many ways. It's a privilege to honour God's deep love for us in this way. He loved us so much that he gave his only son for us to forgive us and to save us. Thank you. 
Hi everyone. It's a personal pleasure for me to introduce my friend and colleague Pauline Kennedy to you this morning. Pauline is the Presbyterian Church in Ireland's Women's Ministry and PW Development Officer and is responsible for supporting the ministry of Presbyterian women as well as assisting in the development of strategy and coordination of women's ministry in general. Pauline and her husband Norman previously served as PCI Overseas Mission Personnel in Kenya. They have three adult sons and worship in Wellington Church in Balamina. While we're disappointed that we can't meet together physically this morning and that Pauline can't be with us in person, we're grateful to her for taking the time to record her talk for us and for the technology that allows us to do so. So let's just take a moment to pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us and for this service this morning. We thank you that although we aren't physically side by side, you have provided the technical means by which we can worship you together. We pray now that the words Pauline shares with us would resonate in each of our hearts and that we would be encouraged and challenged in our walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning to all of you in First Ramara and especially to PW. It's always a privilege to meet with God's people, even in this way, in different parts of the PCI church family. I'd like to thank your PW committee for inviting me to share with you in this special service and especially to Andrea and Rose for all their communication with me over the last weeks. I want to pass on greetings from the PW panel who continue to serve you at central level. They're grateful for all that you do and are so thankful that even through this very difficult year, you've been very faithful through your prayers and your generous giving. We really do pray that your service today will be a real blessing to all. My name's Pauline Kennedy and I'm the Presbyterian Church in Ireland's Women's Ministry and PW Development Officer. Working as part of the Council of Congregational Life and Witness, it's part of my responsibility to help enable and enthuse and equip and develop women's ministry throughout our 540 PCI congregations. I currently live in Balamina with my husband and three sons, and we worship together in Wellington Presbyterian Church family. We were PCI missionaries in Kenya between 1989 and 2007, where we lived and worked in various parts of the country in Kenya, in partnership with the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. I actually grew up not too far from where you are. I grew up in Lisburn and I was nurtured as a young Christian in Elmwood Presbyterian Church. And I'm so thankful to the Lord for those godly people he put in my life and for how they took time to come alongside me and encourage me to grow in Christ. On the 23rd of March last year, the fast spinning wheels of PW ground to a halt. And like so many, we as staff were furloughed from March until the end of August. Those months were challenging, but since returning to work, we've known God's help as we've been getting things going again, getting things moving. As we've done so, we've recognised that the landscape is slightly different but the values of Presbyterian women remain the same, to encourage women of all ages and stages to live for Jesus, being his disciples and making disciples. As you know, PW have extended their theme side by side until 2022, along with their special projects, with the home project coming alongside the actual excellent work of Care NI enabling them to run retreats for women and couples who have suffered real loss through miscarriage. Let's see a little bit more of what this involves. My name is Hannah Arnold and I have the privilege of working for CARE in Northern Ireland. Part of my role is organising our open 
post-abortion healing retreats and our loved miscarriage healing retreats here. As has been the case for many, if not all of us, this year has brought much uncertainty and changes to plans. We too, in Care and I, have had to adjust our plans for multiple retreats in various locations across the country. However, our desire and ultimate goal has remained the same, to provide women and couples with a safe space to take time out, reflect on their experience of loss, share their stories and begin to find healing and hope again. The safety and well-being of those who attend our retreats is of paramount importance to us and so until we are all in a safer position when it comes to COVID-19 we will only be holding loved retreats for small groups or for couples. If you or someone you know would like to find out more please feel free to get in touch with me at my email address which is hannah.arnold at care.org.uk I would love to hear from you and I am happy to share at your PW meetings, whether that be in person or online. At CARE, we have witnessed the restorative and healing testimonies that have come from people who have attended one of our retreats. So please pray, especially for those who will attend future retreats, that each person will know comfort in their loss, healing of their pain and hope for the days to come. The support we are receiving from PW will enable us to hold more retreats and reach more people in the future. Thank you. In her year as PW President, Karen Craig visited Okodungal Hospital Maternity, Mother's Maternity Home, which is our PW Special Overseas Project for 2020 to 22. And again, we're going to have that, a little look at what that means. Here is a quick update from the maternal waiting home in Okaldunga Hospital. One of the ladies that I met on the visit in November 2019 shared with us part of her story. Hello, my name is Bermla Bishwar Karma from Janta County, Okaldunga. In my pregnancy, there are two babies. When I came to the hospital, they checked and told me that one of the babies was in fact already dead, but the other was okay. They said it would not be good to go home as there was fear that the other baby may die. So I stayed in the hospital for a week and then came down to the centre where I've been for 35 days already. Here the sister always checks us at 9am and 2pm and if there are any problems they report to the doctor who comes and follows up with a further check. If necessary they suggest that we stay on here at the centre. Up to now everything has been so good. In my case one baby died at seven months but the other is fine. They have recommended that I stay until January 14th and see if all is okay. If there are any problems, then I could still go back to the hospital. I can always ask Sister Nirmala, but if she's off duty, I can go up to the hospital myself, as I've learned where I need to go. All the facilities are so good here in Okaldunga. Fortunately, all proceeded well and the remaining baby grew normally. After she reached 37 weeks in her pregnancy, 
labour was induced and she progressed quickly to give birth normally to a healthy baby daughter. Vimla and her husband were delighted to be able to hold their new little daughter in their arms after having endured the uncertainty and sadness of the preceding three months. We really want to thank God for how we are enabled by you through your through the PW Mission Fund to continue to support this vital work at home and overseas. Thank you for all that you do, ladies, uh, in whatever shape and form that takes. We, we are very grateful. We want to thank God for how we are enabled through our PW Mission Fund to continue to support work that, like this, which is vital at home and overseas. And we want to thank you for your part in that. During lockdown, I took to walking and in doing so, I discovered places I never really knew existed. Places of stunning beauty hidden away only a few minutes from my home. And one of my favourite walks, which is called the circle in local terms, um, and it was one of my favourite walks of all. And, I, and if I got my timing just right, I could walk there and lean up against a certain tree and watch the sun go, go down on a good day, of course. But it wasn't just the sunsets that made my walk special. It was the opportunity to clear my head and have an honest conversation with God and more importantly, to spend time listening to him. Over the last months, so many of us have been discovering and experiencing new things. At times, life seems unrecognisable and we find ourselves appreciating things closer to home as well as prioritising relationships in our lives that really matter. Because relationships are so valuable to us, we have found ways to grow and to develop those, those relationships and to deepen them, even if that has meant doing things differently and learning things that we have never known before. Since returning to work, I've been blessed to hear how God has been working in and through the lives of so many women throughout our congregations. Stories of how God has used his people to bring real blessing to those whose lives have been turned upside down and to those who are walking through that valley and to those who are lonely. I recently heard a story of one PW group who set up a WhatsApp for their women over lockdown and they shared ideas very simply and kept how to keep busy. They shared prayer requests and verses of scripture uh, and encouragements just to keep in touch and know how they were all doing. Sadly, during this time, one of the women lost her husband. And so the others were able to come alongside her through the group WhatsApp to pray for her and to support her. But moved by her friend's loss, one of the women asked the Lord what she could do to encourage her friend at this time. She was frustrated, like many of us. She was so frustrated that she couldn't visit in the normal way and do the normal things that you would do at a time like that. And so she prayed and asked God how she could really come alongside her friend. What could she do to encourage her? And as she thought about it, she really felt God saying to her, as a pianist, use your gifts. And so she did. She decided to play a few of her friends' favorite hymns and she had them recorded and then put into the group chat as a way of encouraging her friend who had just been bereaved. But it wasn't just her friend that was encouraged because of the woman's stepping out to do something that she'd never really done before. Others were strengthened and encouraged in their walk with God at a time when they needed it too. In our journey of faith as Christian men and women, there are many ways in which we can come alongside each other, albeit for now at a physical distance. And there are lots of reasons why doing this is intention, intentionally good. It's good to have relationships that goes deeper than small talk. We need the love others can offer and the challenge that that can bring as we share our lives together. The impact of godly side-by-side -side relationships with others can be a simple thing, but its significance can last a lifetime. And I know as I look back on my life, I am thankful to God for the people he drew alongside me. 
I think of Paula from Wales, who reached out to me in friendship, sharing her life with me, sharing what Jesus had done for her, and eventually leading me to Jesus in the wee hours of the morning back in October 1982. I'm thankful for Elaine's spiritual maturity as she drew alongside me as a new Christian and for her wisdom that has had significant impact on different areas of my life. I'm grateful for over 20 years worth of prayer with Sheila, who's now in her 90s, every third Monday and Monday night in the month. We'll be together praying and even now over the phone and the list could go on as I'm sure yours could as well. When God blesses us through others, it's so that we can turn in turn, draw alongside others to pass that blessing on. In the busyness of our everyday lives, it's, it's easy to lose sight of how investing in others can have a lifelong blessing. In the Bible, we see the power of drawing side by side in Christian relationship. In the Old Testament, we read how Naomi and Ruth shared life together through hard times and how they encouraged one another to live out God's purposes for them and for their lives across the generations. In the New Testament, Paul tells Titus to encourage older women to model godly living so as to inspire younger women in the church. The phrase side by side appears in different places of scripture. For example, in Philippians 1 and 27, it says this, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. And again, in Philippians 4 and verse 3, Paul writes, Help these women who, who have laboured side by side with me in the gospel. What an amazing picture of the Church of Jesus Christ. In Thessalonians, and we've had our passage read today, which is our focus, we see how Paul wrote to encourage and strengthen young believers who were being persecuted for their faith. Over and over again, he uses the word encouragement. For example, in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 12, he says, We exhorted each of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his, his own kingdom and glory. Again, in chapter 4 and verse 18, therefore encourage one another with these words. And in our passage today, chapter 5, verse 11, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. We too are called to help each other walk in a manner worthy of God as we wait for his return. It's not just up to our leaders or our elders or our ministers. To do this. We all have a role to play. Titus 2 and other passages make this very clear. Every single one of us has a role to play. There are countless situations but we're, are we ready to take these opportunities to lovingly speak truth into the lives of others? Throughout the Bible we see the power of drawing along, alongside each other. It's what Jesus did in Mark. We read, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed the twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out and to preach. At this stage in his ministry, <clears throat> Jesus had gathered large crowds of followers, but in these verses we see him coming alongside a few. He went up the mountain and called to him those he wanted. Jesus shared his ministry with Peter, James and John. And Mark reminds us that Jesus appointed 12 that they may be with him. Throughout the New Testament, we see how Jesus demanded that making disciples and building them up in their faith was an investment in their lives. He didn't just preach and teach them from the front, but he modeled his life side by side walking together, talking together, eating together, serving and reaching out to others together. He became a living example 
by coming close and being with them. This faithful investment in the lives of others was time well spent as they went on to impact the world. I wonder what would happen if you and I could do the same as he did. What if we could invest in one or two or even three people over the next year? Meet with them in whatever way is allowed, but be open with them. Share your story with them. Be a role model. Read the Bible and pray together. This doesn't have to be a new thing, a big new programme or the next shiny thing. Coming alongside others is simply doing what we've been asked to do by the one who did it for us. We need to be intentional about finding ways to invest in the lives of others. In her book entitled One to One, Sophie DeWitt writes this. She says, one Christ, it's one Christian taking the initiative with another individual to help them know Christ better and obey him more fully through studying the scriptures, through prayer for and with them and sharing one's life with them, leaving the results to God. We need to be people who seek everyday ways to come alongside whoever it is God nudges us towards. As women and men, we're needy. Maybe we don't like to think of ourselves that way. We much prefer being needed, don't we? I know I do. But if we are honest, in some way or other, we are needy. In a world where independence is rated much higher than interdependence, most of us really struggle, don't we, to admit our need, or even worse, to ask for help. Even though we have communication at our fingertips in all its shapes and forms, it's said that people have never felt so disconnected. Life is busy, isn't it? It's fast and full, putting stress and strain on our relationships. Sadly, this independent culture has spilled over into our Christian lives and quite often for some, church can be a lonely experience. Some time ago, I had a conversation with someone who had been going to a particular church for over two years, but still came away from a large and small group meetings, feeling isolated and alone. It wasn't that people didn't greet her. It wasn't that they didn't invite her to things. It wasn't even that they didn't know her name. They did all of that very well. Though it was just that they did, it didn't go any deeper than that. Life was hard for her. She was in a difficult place and she just needed more. Sadly, in her desperation, she turned to an outside group for support and help. No matter what our circumstances, we all need encouragement, affirmation and an honest sense of belonging to the body of Christ. That's how we're made and that's how God created us. God's word clearly assigns each of us the task of encouragement, support and to have love for one another. 1 John 3 and 23 says this, and this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he has commanded us. Ministry is changing and we need to find fresh ways to close the gap between our generations of older and younger. With different lifestyle patterns and approaches to learning, younger women tell me they're not always looking for more meetings, but instead they're longing for someone that has walked the path of faith that would come alongside them as they walk theirs. The opportunity to share side by side is increasingly valued. In each of our lives, it's good to recognise the need to pass on the baton to an increasingly scarce next generation. Investing side by side, sharing the wisdom of the years and encouraging fresh ways of doing things are key to the future. As individuals, we're not just needy, but we're also needed. So often we think being needy is weakness, yet in God's view, it's when we're weak that he is strong. If only we could overcome our fear and allow ourselves to bear our weaknesses, as well as bear the weaknesses of others as we walk side by side each other. Paul urges us as Christians to encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you're doing. He goes on to say, encourage the weak, 
the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. And again he says, Now about brotherly love we do not write to you for yourselves have been taught by God to love each other, yet we urge you, do so more and more. Paul longed that each member of the body of Christ in Thessalonica, no matter what age or stage of life, would be active in building others up and showing real love as they walked the path of faith. This wasn't something they were to do for a wee while and then stop. It wasn't a one-off ministry, event or even theme for the year. This was to be a way of life and they, ordinary people like you and me, were to keep on doing it more and more. I love how Ed Welsh encourages us to get involved. If you feel quite weak and ordinary, if you feel like a mess but have the spirit, you have the right credentials. You are the, one of the ordinary people God uses to help others. It's easy, isn't it, to find reasons not to do this, especially in our COVID restricted world. It's easy to allow our fears and inadequacies to paralyze us and keep us from connecting with others. Perhaps you're thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but you know, my life's pretty full at the minute. I've got plenty to keep me going. And anyway, it's much easier to spend time with people my own age. Or maybe you're thinking I could never do that. What would I have to offer? What wisdom or encouragement could I give to someone else? Or perhaps you would really value someone drawing alongside you, but you don't quite know how to go about organising it. Let's not allow our fears and feelings of inadequacy rob us and others of benefiting from a closer walk with God. This isn't complicated or difficult. Every day God gives us ways to connect with one another. Maybe you could get alongside someone to develop a caring friendship with someone you know has gone through a hard time. Or what about that prayer partnership with someone? Maybe develop ways to come alongside someone who's overseas, encouraging them, getting to know them, asking them what they would need for prayer. A relationship that helps someone experience and explore the gospel. A working relationship that helps someone grow into leadership so that they can take over from you. Maybe you're already doing all of this in ways that you can simply build on or develop. As God's people, we've had to hone in on the essentials of our faith recently, haven't we? Knowing that in all of this, he is still the one true God who's worthy of all of our praise. Whether it's been on the phone, Zoom, YouTube, Facebook or WhatsApp, we've had to be intentional about finding ways to come alongside each other. And as we celebrate what God is still doing amongst us these days, and as we look back and see how he has been helping us to prioritise what's of real value, let's thank him for the tools that he's given us to help us grow our faith despite the fact that we've been apart physically. As we look forward, we want to continue with him as he helps us build his church and encourage each other. I wonder who's putting God is putting on your heart even now. And how can you be investing in them over the next year? Investing in others will involve open, opening our lives and our homes, perhaps, when we're allowed. Side by side is about people more than it's about programs and activities. I wonder where you'll begin. Why don't you start with prayer? Let's pray. Lord, we just praise you today that you are our sovereign God and that you have called us to build your church and to be ready for your return. We cry out to you, O Lord, that you would give us a sense of urgency to reach out and to come alongside those who need you. Give us that same power that you gave to your disciples to be the church, the body of Christ. Lord Jesus, grow your church in these days, we pray in your name. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, we have come to the end of our service and we want to thank you. Lord, you've been with us from the start to the end and we just want to thank you for that. Jesus, our good shepherd, help us to listen to your voice and follow you wherever you're leading us this week. Father, may we walk according to the word that has been preached to us today so that we can be light to the world. Give us discernment that we may not follow the voice of a stranger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, on your behalf, can I thank everyone who's been involved in the service today, from the singing to the praying to uh, Pauline and right through to everyone who's pieced it all together. It's been really good just to see lots of different faces on the screen, hear lots of different voices and to remind ourselves that indeed, yes, the building might be closed, but the church is not. Let's just close together in prayer. Let's pray. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.